this video, let me show how to solve a problem which was included in 2017 CSAT math exam as studies problem and also posted on Reddit. This problem is actually calculus level, especially up to differentiation of polynomials. Feel free to stop this video and try it if you want to do so before watching my solution. The function f of x defined in x greater than a and the quadratic function g of x whose leading coefficient is negative 1 satisfy the following conditions. At this time, a is constant, just regard it as a real number. a. For all real numbers x greater than a, x minus a times f of x is equal to g of x. b. For two distinct real numbers alpha and beta, fx has the same local maximum value m at x equals alpha and x equals beta. c. The number of x where fx has the extreme value is larger than the number of x where g of x has the extreme value. If beta minus alpha is 6 times square root of 3, find the minimum value of m. We know that g of x is a quadratic polynomial function, but how about f of x? Except x is a, it will be either a polynomial or a rational function. Then let's suppose that f of x is a polynomial function. That it must be a QD function since g of x is a quadratic and divisible by x minus a. But according to condition b, f of x has two local maximum points. Generally, a cubic function cannot have two local maximum points. So f of x is not a cubic function, but a rational function. This is a possible case of f of x. As f of x is continuous for any x greater than a, there must be a local minimum between the two local minimum points. And since g of x is fourth polynomial and f of x is a form which can have up to four x-intercepts where x is greater than a, there must be no more critical points other than those three. Then by condition c, the number of extreme points of g of x is 2 or less. Now let's derivate g of x. g of x is equal to x minus a times f of x. Then by product rule, g prime of x becomes f of x plus x minus a times f prime of x. At this point, g prime of alpha is f of alpha plus alpha minus a times f prime of alpha. Since f has a local maximum value m at x equals alpha and beta, f of alpha is m and f prime alpha is 0. So g prime of alpha is simplified to m. Similarly, g prime of beta is m as well. Let's also check the g of alpha and g of beta. g of alpha is f of alpha times alpha minus a. As f of alpha is m, it is simplified to m times alpha minus a. Similarly, g of beta is m times beta minus a. Now, let me subtract these two. g of beta minus g of alpha is equal to this one. And is simply calculated to m times beta minus alpha. Then g of beta minus g of alpha is m times beta minus alpha. In other words, g of beta minus g of alpha divided by beta minus alpha is m. Let's look at those three. The slopes of g of x at x equals alpha and beta are both m. And the average change of g of x from alpha comma g of alpha and beta comma g of beta is m as well. That means there is a line tangent to g of x at both alpha comma g of alpha and beta comma g of beta. Then for this line, its slope is m and past alpha comma g of alpha. So the equation of this tangent line is y equals m times x minus alpha plus g of alpha. Meanwhile, g of alpha is m times alpha minus a. So it changes to this. Then it is simplified to this. Now, let me draw the graphs again. Approaching to this graph is a key point of solving this problem. Eventually, g of x has a tangent line which is tangent to both alpha comma g of alpha and beta comma g of beta and passes a comma zero as an x intercept. The leading coefficient of g of x is negative one and we still have to find the minimum of the positive value m so that g of x has two or fewer critical points. To do so, there must be no extrema around this area. 
then the slope of this inflection point must be positive. Meanwhile, this red line is tangent to g of x where x equals alpha and beta, and the leading coefficient of the quadratic function g of x is negative 1. Then let me find the equation subtracting from g of x to the red line. This function must be all non-positive since g of x is always below the red line. Instead, it is 0 only at x equals alpha and beta. Besides, it is a quadratic function with a leading coefficient negative 1. So the result must be this equation. Then g of x can be simplified by d and its shape can be determined depending on m, the slope of the red line. So how can you make this graph having less than two critical points? It's simple. g of x is a function made by adding the red line from the blue graph. But as the slope m of the red line is positive, m must be sufficiently large so that all the slopes of this interval of the blue graph become positive. So by finding the slope of the inflection point which has the least slope, we can find the minimum value of m. The problem says that beta minus alpha is 6 times square root of 3. So to make the calculation easier, I will translate this graph so that alpha and beta are translated to negative 3 times square root of 3 and 3 square root of 3. Now, I will expand and take derivatives twice to find the inflection points. y is expanded to negative x of fourth power plus 54 times x square minus 729. y prime is negative 4 times x cubed plus 108x y double prime is negative 12x square plus 808, which is factorized to negative 12 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. So y has the inflection points at x equals negative 3 and 3. Since the slope which I am looking for is on the left side, I will plug negative 3 onto y prime. This is y prime at x equals negative 3. And by calculating it, we get negative 216. So the lowest slope of y on the left interval is negative 216. That is, if m is greater than or equal to 216, g of x has less than 3 critical points. So the answer is 216. Please hit like if you like my video today, and subscribe if you want to study more about math with me. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.